So cool guys, today we are going to start with the starters 88 from Code Chef. We will be discussing the first three questions or the problems that is maximum and or chef and asteroids and minimize the bits. So let's get started with the uh, very first problem. But today we are going to do it in the reverse order. So let's get started with minimize the bits. So this problem states that uh, you are given a binary string A of length n. The uh, decimal representation of the string can be used. And our task is to represent this particular string A in terms of B and C where A is equal to B minus C, right? And then they have said that the entire goal is to minimize the number of ones in B and C, uh, uh, in B and C combined, right? So there could be many ways you can write A as a subtraction of B and C. But in all the ways possible, what you actually want to do is you want to minimize the number of ones that would, uh, that would, uh, that would make up A, right? So the first question is how would we even do it? Is there a way of doing it? So yes, uh, there are tricks that you can utilize over here or there are logics that you can utilize over here. So, uh, so the easy observation is that if you are having something like uh, 1, 1, 1, right? So this, this basically is 7. Now 7 can be written as 8 minus 1, right? Is equal to 7, right? Now how many bits does uh, this 7 has? So in order to represent seven, you need it, uh, you required three bits over here, but over here eight requires just one bit because the representation of eight is one zero zero, and representation of one is zero zero one, right? So uh, this the first number and the second number in combined required only two bits. That is an improvement of one bit because initially you were requiring three bits in total, right? So this is uh, this is the way in which you can decrease the number of bits you require. But wait. Can I extend this further? Yes, this can be extended. So I can say in general, if I'm having a collection of ones, right? So I can represent that collections of one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I can represent that collection of ones as one followed by the same number of zeros. So basically if it's like uh, two to the power zero plus two to the power one plus two to the power two up to so on to two to the power n. So this can be represented by, by two to the power, okay, two to the power n plus one, right? Okay, sorry. Minus two to power n. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, minus one, right? So in this way, we can represent it. So basically, this uh, this would be a single one followed by a lot of zeros and then a one, right? Now a lot of zeros because I'm not defining what n is. So yeah, there are some number of zeros that are uh, right now undefined. Now the uh, the special case over here is this this part. This is the easy part, right? Now the special case uh, case over here was what would happen if there is a single zero in between so let's say our string was one one right and then we had a zero and then there was a one 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 what would happen in this case now using the same logic as above you could have said that the string would be one zero okay zero uh, like the string b would be zero one followed by three zeros right and then a one for this particular part and then similarly for this, you had to do the same thing. But now this becomes a problem because it's overlapping exactly over here. So what can you do in this case? This was the only, uh, okay, not even over here. Yeah. So over here, this would have been this way, right? Uh, zero one followed by three zeros, then a single one that would have been followed by three zeros. This would have been B minus, so minus C. Now what would have been C over here? So C basically would have been zero, zero. Right now, for here, uh, for this, you would have ta taken a triple zero, 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 zero. Right, one, and and then the same thing had, would have followed. But now, can we even decrease this? Because over here, we were, we are saying that this is the string we are getting. So from A, we are a able to get B. So even B is having two ones in it. Can we decrease it further? Turns out, yes, we can. Because one of the way of representing A was uh, A would have been. Now over here, I'm, I'm saying that I'm not decreasing these ones right over here, right? These ones are, is something I'm not decreasing. Let's just decrease these pairs of ones. So what would your string A become? Your stri string A would have been zero. That would be zero, zero followed by three zeros, right? And in order to decrease this, you would have uh, made this particular zero a one. So this would have been a one followed by three zeros, right? Now, if you notice and your, okay, so let's just also write B. 
as well so it would have been zero zero then triple zero then a zero then a double zero and one right now if you notice your string a can be broken down further right so your string a can be broken down further as a zero zero one all zeros right and then you would have also written a one over here right so let's also write that zero zero uh, zero zero and a zero and a zero and a one and a zero 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 right and then this particular term right over here so you would have written that as well right or in combination you could have said that this would be uh, zero zero one all zeros minus zero 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 one zero zero one right so th this is this is something you could have broke, uh, broken this down uh, this down into now why uh, why is this even beneficial to me because had i not done in, uh, this in this particular fashion right had i followed the same approach in that case i would have utilized four ones in total but right now i'm only uh, sorry uh, yeah i'm only utilizing three ones right now so that is a win case for me i'm decreasing the number of ones that are required right so yeah uh, so i'll be following this particular approach and when all this would be valid so over here we are able to see that we firstly converted the first half into zeros right so we converted the first half into zeros right over here and then we move to the, this particular half or in the other terms we can say we can only do this particular uh, transformation only when the pockets of ones are separated by a single zero right so if they're uh, separated by a single zero only then we can do this particular transformations so that is something i'll be doing right over here so i uh, and this one more edge case so this edge case is already discussed right so this was one of the edge cases that we discussed now what's the other edge case for example if you have a string 111 right you cannot write it as 1 uh, 1 0 0 0 minus 0 0 0 1 now why is that the case we can definitely write 7 as 8 minus 1 as, as i already told you the only constraint is that over here they are saying that if your a is of length n then your b and c also should be of length n now triple zero is of length 3 your one triple zero becomes a string of length four, so definitely can't do that. So that's the uh, that's one thing we have to check. So how can we check that? So for that I'm uh, starting with the integer i. I'm incrementing it till the time all the uh, starting digits are ones, so that I'm now standing at a position that's either the end or it's a zero right now, right? And then I'll be using the same operation as I told you. So what I'm doing is I'm checking if the current element and the element just before it if both of them are ones only then it makes uh, sense to this do this particular operation right because if there's a single one then you cannot decrease the number of occurrence number of ones required to represent it correct so if uh, only if there are multiple ones in a single pocket then you can utilize it then i'm saying okay set the b strings jth element to one itself because we know wherever wherever this particular string starts right from the right hand side wherever this string starts you have a one in the b, uh, in the bth string as well right so that's why i'm taking i'm setting the jth element of b as one then i'm checking that either my j is greater than i so j is becoming the right limit or, and i is becoming the left limit right so if my j is greater than i and the jth element is equal to one or or what should happen is that my previous element so it could be the case that the jth element is zero but the element just to the left of it is one even in that case as we recalled over here over okay yeah over here so as we said that in this case also we can uh, say that this is a contiguous string right because we'll be able to represent it anyway so i'm saying if j is greater than i uh, is j is greater than i and if the left element is also one in that case also i'll keep proceeding the only difference is now if this condition holds right if this condition holds in that case i need to uh, set the bit in B as well. So that's something I'll be doing over here. After that, I'll be setting the value in J. So this is redundant. You need not do it. You can remove this. Okay. Uh, and then I'll be saying the value at the eighth, at the eighth string is zero. And I'll keep decrementing my J. As soon as I'm done with this, right? So as soon as we, uh, I'll be done with this particular loop, I'll be standing at this particular location. Over here, I know I need a one, so I'll be setting the value as one, and then I'll be printing the string a and b. Uh, any doubts on this? All fine? Cool. I'm gonna pr uh, proceed ahead if uh, things are clear. Okay. 
let's go to the next question or shift and asteroid okay so the problem states that chef enjoys playing among us uh with uh, with other chefs in the kitchen so basically a pretty, a pretty long statement i'm not gonna go through that now what they're saying is that there are some asteroids that are given so the x and y coordinates are given and what you want to do is you want to boost the uh, the asteroid having the minimum x coordinate first right so technically you will be bursting this and then you will be bursting these three any one of these three and then the remaining uh, remaining twos and then, then the only remaining one and then you will be bursting any one of these two and then the remaining one from these right so this is the way you are going to proceed so basically in this particular case if i not, uh, name them as one two three four five six right so if i name them as okay let's write it over here Okay, if I name them as one and the second is in the second line I have two, three, four, and then I have five, six, right? Now the reason I'm writing it in such set format is because one has the least y or is the least away, right? Then comes two, three, and four, then comes five and six. If you notice then one is at at this uh, one it uh, one is at the lowest distance from the y axis. Right, or its x coordinate is minimum. Similarly, two, three, four have the same x uh, x coordinates. So do five and six, right? So I can do it like this, or I could have bursted like one, and then I could have bursted three, two, four, right? And then I could have bursted a five, six, or six, five. So basically, all of these elements that belong to the same set, they have a choice of being jumbled up. Right, or all the permutation of them would be valid. Now, how do we cal calculate the permutations? Because over here, uh, any any permutation would follow. So it's basically n factorial or x factorial. You can say where x is the number of elements. So the number of ways to represent two, three, four would have been three factorial. The number of ways to represent five, six would have been two factorial. Right. So that is something I have to do. Now, how many total number of arrangements would have been there? That definitely are n factorial total number of arrangements. Right. So yeah, that's it about the question. So you have, uh, since we need to represent the probability in the form of P by Q, and uh, then we need to do P into Q inverse modulo. So I'm not discussing modulo operations. That's out, out of the sp scope of this particular question. I'll just try to give you the brief idea behind it. And I'll also uh, let you copy this uh, boilerplate code. It might come in handy. Okay, so initially just to save time, what I'm doing is I'm pre-calculating the factorials. So here's where I'm calculating the factorials. After that, I have a boilerplate code that actually serves me with the mod inverse and stuff, right? So this is cal uh, calculated using uh, a format lit uh, format's little theorem. And uh, now uh, what we need to do. So we need to calculate the number of asteroids that are having similar X coordinates, right? And I don't know why they even mentioned y coordinates over here. It's uh, probably just to confuse people. So y coordinates are of no use. So I'm taking two values x and y, and I'm calculating in a frequency uh, hash map. I'm calculating the number of asteroids which have the same x, right? Now, in order to calculate probability, we have p by q. Which uh, so this is the numerator and this is the denominator. So the numerator, right now, would be the number of ways in which you can shuffle those elements and get the right results that I discussed. Uh, okay, I think I cleared that up. Yeah, I cleared that up. Anyway, so like I discussed that you have uh, two, three, six, right? Two, three, four rather, and you could have jumbled it up in any manner possible. So this basically is three factorial, right? Now, all the elements that would be having the same X coordinates can be jumbled up. So, I'm using a frequency uh, frequency hash map I just populated and for all of those elements I'll try to take the factorial so as to get the number of permutations I'll multiply them by new uh, new way and uh, or the numerator and I'll take a mod similarly the denominator would be all the number of uh, possible permutations that would be factorial uh, factorial n or n factorial then my answer is numerator into modulo inverse of denominator. This is similar to saying numerator divided by denominator, but since we are doing modulo operations, this is the way of doing it. We have to take a modulo inverse of it and I'm printing it out. So yeah, that's it for this problem. Uh, Pirate King, you had a doubt in this. Is it resolved now?
Okay, so let's go for the last problem. That is maximum and or. Okay, this is a somewhat easy problem. The only thing is that people did it wrong by taking uh, the a built-in power function. That actually doesn't work so over here. And now there there could be two reasons. I don't know exactly why it's not working because the limit is a thirty thirty bits. So anyway, it should have worked. The only reason is because power actually returns you a double right. Okay. So the power function or the inbuilt power function this returns you a double. Now when you directly try to print a double, it actually sometimes gets represented in the scientific notation. That is something like one eighteen, right? Or sorry, not in this case. It cannot be one eighteen, but it could be one seven plus uh, one or something of this sort, right? Now that's why this is one of the reason I believe that people got it wrong. So the basic thing is that they are stating that you have. Okay, so they are stating the basic function f of p, q, and r as r. Or p minus q and p, where these are the basic bitwise operations, and then they say that uh, we have three integers a, b, and c, and we have to count the number of integers x, right? Such that if x comma a comma b has the maximum possible value, so how many possible x would be that? Now, in order to calculate it, what you can do is you can say that f a x okay, so it's yeah. X A B needs to be maximum, right? Another thing you can actually vary over here is X. So let's call this X dash. Now, to what values can you vary it so that your answer still remains the maximum? That actually depends. So if I write it in terms of A and B, what I can say is that the that what I'm looking for is basically X or B minus X and A. Now, in which all terms, uh, it won't matter. So I can give any value to x. Now I'm talking in terms of bits. I'm not talking in absolute manner. So if I'm talking in uh, at which bit, so you basically need to understand if I'm saying x or b. So I'm talking in the relation of a certain bit i, right? So if the ith bit is already set in b, right, then would it matter if I'm setting the bit in x or not? Yes, it would matter in one case. If that same bit is also set in A, right? That would basically be X is unknown, so let's keep it X. So we said that B is one, or the bit is set in B, right? And then X over here is still X. Now it matters on A. Now if your eighth bit or the ith bit in A is also set, right? In that case, if you set the uh, set the bit in X as well, so this become one and one. So that this would become one in total, and then one would be subtracted. However, if the bit was not set in A, then you have the entire choice. So if it's the if the uh, ith bit is not set in A, then you have the choice. You either set the ith bit, uh, x, ith bit in X or you don't. Either way, so let's just keep it X. Yeah. Either way, your answer would always be one, right? So that is one of the scenarios. That is the bit is set in B, right? So it's set in B and it's not set in A. In that case, we can increment our count. Now, what's count over here? Count is basically the number of bits at which I can uh, uh, I uh, I can either set them or remove them. It won't change the answer per se, right? Now, uh, what's the other uh, what's the other condition that uh, can help uh, that can be uh, useful to me? The other condition is what if the bit is set in B, right? But okay, so that condition we already did. But okay, let's say over here. What if the bit is set uh, is not set in B, right? And it's set in A. Now, why would this would uh, be helpful for me? So the reason is now if you set the bit in uh, X, right? So this particular term this becomes one. But then this all terms also becomes one because one and one would be one. So you get zero. If you don't set it in B, so then your first term. Uh, term uh, if you don't set it in X, your first term remains zero. But the second term is also zero. In that case, also you get zero, right? So either it should be set in A and not set in B, or it should be set in B and not set in A. Only in that case you have the choice of either setting it, the setting the ith bit in uh, X, or not setting it, right? Otherwise, you don't have a choice of uh, selecting whether to uh, set the bit or not. 
and after that you will just say that the answer is two to the power count but over here as i said that uh, pow might give you a wrong answer so try to use the custom implementation so this is the custom implementation i have made this is a boilerplate code which i basically use for mathematical uh, functions so i will i have used that and the, uh, then printed it to the power count cool so that's it for this session i'll turn off okay. the video and then if you if you guys have any doubts you can let me know